Praise the Lord. And welcome to this edition of our series of daily broadcasts, which we have tagged the State of the Union, the union between Jesus and his bride, the church. And we are still about the business of the word of the Lord saying, tell my people to return to me. Why is that so important that we return to him? In the course of this edition today, we will answer that question in a roundabout way using the scriptures. If the Lord says, return to me, it means he wants us where he is. And you cannot be where he is except you are a follower. You cannot be where he is except you are a follower. Now, by where he is, we are not necessarily talking about a positional relationship, although that is critical, and it was evinced in his relationship with his early disciples. They were with him physically for the space of three odd years. But to be where he is, is not only a reference to physical location, it can also be to operate from or at the dimension that he is operating. So at any given moment, Jesus may be operating from one or the other several possibilities in Christ. We need to be where he is part time so that we can make Christ visible to the world. So he says, tell my people to return to me. But to be where he is, there is something else which we have been looking at in the last couple of days. There is something else which we must measure up to. He says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples, or if you like, followers indeed. So we qualify in the dimension of disciple or follower if we continue in his word, if we give his word priority, if we let his word determine our choices, our decisions, or what have you. So when he says, tell my people to return to me, let us understand that the master is, as it were, calling us to followership. Whatever else, or in fact, whoever else you may have been following, he says, tell my people to return to him. And those who follow him, who return to follow, he says, they are his disciples indeed. Now, there be certain things written in the scriptures concerning the disciples of Jesus. And we will do well to make an examination of these so that we can come into a better understanding of what he meant. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. There were certain things which Jesus said concerning his disciples, but which by saying them, he brought his disciples to a different platform entirely. Let us look at these things in, in order. 
So Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. If we are his disciples, then we will be his followers. Because by definition, a disciple is somebody who follows after a certain other person. Whether you are following after his teaching or, or what the issue is, you are a student of that person. You are a practitioner of what that person stands for. So you are a follower of that person. So he, so he is saying then that if we continue in his word, then are we his followers indeed. That's the hallmark of followership or the hallmark of being in his word. If you continue in his word, you will necessarily have to follow after him. Now, if we continue in his word, or if we are followers or disciples, we should necessarily arrive where he is. We should arrive at his destination. Otherwise, in following, what is the purpose? What is the aim in following? You want to arrive somewhere. You want to arrive at, hopefully, some predetermined destination. In following after Christ, there's always going to be only one result. We are going to become like him. We are going to be where he is, whether it be physically, since we are following him. So if you are following somebody, I mean physically now, you are in a crowd, you are following somebody, you will necessarily have to be wherever he is, or you are going to lose your way. So we should arrive where he is. So I, I want to imagine that that is the whole point of discipleship. Not what we do today, where we gather disciples, and by that we have boys who we can send on errands here and there. We have boys who can call us master. People we can refer to as sons. He is my son in the faith. He is my father in the Lord. There's no Christ in it. You're just following the man. You're learning his ways. And if you're not careful, indeed, you will arrive where he is. You will repeat his mistakes. You will repeat his sins. If any, that is. So Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 3, after saying, if you believe in God, believe in me also. There are many mansions in my father's house, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. Now, in verse 3, after saying that he's going to prepare a place for us, he says, And I will come to you again and receive you unto myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. So not only in the commonsensical way of following and arriving at a certain destination, it is the master's design that we be where he is. We will arrive at the same place where he is. And where is he right now? Sitting on the right hand side of the throne in majesty. And the Bible actually confirms that we are where he is. We are sitting in him on that throne. Then he says to his disciples in, in Luke chapter 22, 29 and 30. And I'll paraphrase. He says, he says you are they who have continued with me in my temptations. 
you have continued with me in my temptations. Now I appoint unto you kingdoms so that you can reign with me over the 12 tribes of Israel. In other words, because you have followed me all this time, I now make sure that you will be where I am. He appoints unto them a kingdom, a dimension of expression. He appoints unto them similar to his own so that they can sit with him in judgment over Israel. The desire of the master is that the disciple be where he is. In yesterday's broadcast, we saw a perfect demonstration of that fact. Luke chapter 10, Mary and Martha, Jesus had entered their home Mary sat at his feet. Mary, the Bible says, was encumbered by much service. And she came to complain to Jesus. Master, master, won't you tell my sister to come join me in, in the service? And Jesus says to her, your sister Mary has chosen the better place. Where is this better place? At his feet. It is the desire of the master that the disciple be where he is. He says, I will come again to you and receive you unto myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. Scripture says that that scripture has already been fulfilled. We are now where he is, sitting in him on the throne. But then the plot thickens. In Matthew 28, 19 and 20, in sending out his disciples. Now, in one of the very earliest episodes of this series of broadcasts, we did come across this matter. The business of what Jesus said to his disciples, what he said to the multitudes, what he said to the religious leaders, and then whoever else. We must be clear to note the kinds of things he said to his disciples. He always spoke in a manner of bringing them to the same level as himself. Matthew 10, the Bible says in verse 1, he said, Jesus called the twelve unto himself, and then he gave them power against unclean spirits. He gave them something that he had. Why? So that they could operate like himself. Luke chapter 18. He says, Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. Over all the power of the enemy. No, but nothing shall by any means hurt you. I give you something that I have. I give you something that is operational in me. I am bringing you to the dimension of possibility where I am. He never said such things to the multitude. Always in the direction of the disciples. Do you see where he says to somebody from the crowd, come, when he was walking on water? They were not there. The multitudes are never there when those kind of things are happening. But he says to Peter, come. And Peter began to walk on water. The same thing that the master had just done. Okay, imagine, at the time of this conversation where Peter says to Jesus, if it be you, bid me come. And the master said, come. At that critical moment, Jesus was not walking on water. He was standing on water. You may say that while he's walking on water, his, his weight is not such as to displace enough water for him to sink because he's moving. Now he's talking to Peter. He's standing. And he stretches. He says, come. Now it is Peter who starts to walk. He's walking on water. If Jesus was walking, 
then how would he have gained enough traction to be able to lift Peter out of the water as he began to sink? Jesus not only walked on water, he stood on water. But in pulling Peter out of the water, what do you think happened to Peter? He too also stood on water before perhaps they got on, on, the, on the land. I don't want to imagine they needed to re-enter the boat to get to land. You've been walking on water, now you want to get on the boat to get to the land? Hey, come on. So in Matthew 28, 19 and 20, he says once again to his disciples, go, I paraphrase, go into all the nations and disciple all nations, teaching them to obey the commandments as I have first taught you. That's verse 19. And then he says, lo, that is see, I am with you always. That's it again. The master desiring to be where the disciples are and vice versa. He says, Lo, I am with you always. This is the legacy of followers. He is with them always. He said to himself, He said, Lo, I am with you always. Now, in another place, still on the same trend, the master wants his disciples where he is. The hallmark of discipleship is being where the master is. Whether it be in doctrine or judgment or instruction in whatever. That's why he gave us the spirit. So we are led by the spirit. Because every time you are led by the spirit, you are exactly where the master is. So in another place, Specifically in John chapter 17, verse 18. Now Jesus is praying. And he prays the following. He's talking to his father. And he says, As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Do you see the similarity of dimension once again? He says, as the father. So you have to wonder, how did the father send him? The Father sent Jesus with the full weight of the glory of the Father. The Bible says Jesus returned from the wilderness in the power of the Spirit. Jesus said, whatever you hear me say is as the Father first taught me. He said, the things which you see me do, they are the Father in me that do it, the works. This is the dimension of operation of Jesus. Now he says, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so, I also send them into the world. What do you think Jesus is referring to? Do you see Jesus preaching born again? We are the ones who do that because we are the ones sent to the Gentile world. Jesus is not referring, as it were, to the business of salvation. He is referring to the dimension in which his father sent him. You could say that's the dimension of sonship. You could call it the di dimension of relationship with the Father. Colossians 1, 15, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, they both say that Jesus is the, ex is the image, is the express image of the invisible God. This is how the Father sent him. In the full capacity of the Father. In the full revelation of the Father. He sent him in the dimension of oppression of the Father. Now Jesus says, that's exactly how I am sending my disciples out. In other words, these followers, apostles we now call them, they were to operate in the same dimension as Christ. Then he repeats the sentiment in John chapter 20, verse 21. He says, as my Father has sent me, so send I ye. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. John 20 and 21. As my Father has sent me, so I send you. 
as you have sent me into the world, that's how I have sent them into the world. The same dimension. Does that tell you something? Remember, our word is still, tell my people to return to me. We begin to put it into proper perspective now. He wants us with him. True discipleship or followership is benchmarked in the fact that we are where he is. We operate in the dimension of Christ. The followers of Christ are guaranteed the same dimension as Jesus. He said, as my father sent me, that's how I'm sending them. So when Christ sends you, he sends you with the full weight of glory that the father sent him. It's a delegated authority. So you are operating in the authority of Christ. You are operating in the person of Christ. So it's no longer you, actually. It's Christ. So it has to be the same dimension. So the, the dimension of the apostles of Christ was a dimension of expression of Christ. He was being expressed in them. So the apostolic, therefore, which is a dimension of followership, is the ultimate expression of Christ. As my Father has sent me, even so have I sent them. As my Father sent me, so I send you, my disciples. And who are these disciples? If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. So this is not for just about anybody. It is for those who have continued. It is for those who have returned to continue. Now it is clear. Jesus wishes that we be where he is. I'll show you one final scripture and hopefully nail that to the cross. In John chapter 17 verse 24, Jesus praying says, Excuse me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. Mary chose to be where Jesus was. He was apparently sitting in the living room talking. And Mary sat at his feet listening. This is where he wants us to be. He says, tell my people to return to me. Think about what the Lord is asking us to return to. He's asking us to return to the dimension. He's asking us to return to the dimension of Christ. Nothing else. He says, return to me. Return to me. Return to me. He's asking us to return to the dimension of Christ. There is a dimension of oppression that is the dimension of Christ. It is available to his disciples. And he said so himself, that where I am, there they may be also. As my father has sent me, so I sent them. You have continued with me in all my temptations. Now I appoint unto you a kingdom. Did you hear Jesus say to Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world? So just as he has a kingdom, he appoints unto his disciples a kingdom. Why? If we're going to reign together, then we must be at the same level. Kingdom for kingdom. Praise the Lord. He says, tell my people to return to me. And we must leave it there for today. Our time is fast spent.
there is an examination that is yet left to be done. There is a dimension of experience available to those who continue in his word, the disciples. It's all written in scripture. I invite you to take a journey through the scriptures, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and see what the Lord has to say concerning his disciples. And in returning to him, you make yourself one of those. Because that is the dimension that is available to those who walk in him. And this is what he's asking us to return to. We'll be back again tomorrow. Who knows what God is going to occasion for us to feed from. But for this one, let it be known that he says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. God bless you. Stay with his words. They are words of wisdom.